Number three of the emotion video today. I, I don't know. I'm talking about a lot of emotion, and I wanted to mention uh, why is it an internet emotion? Right. <clears throat> My apologies. When I, I told you guys that I, I was living alone, right? And uh, I wasn't living, for example, emotion. How can I be alone and feel the emotion of love? How can I be alone and feel emotion of anger, right? So what I used to do, like I said, um, this is my psychology video. Um, a big, big, big part of it was uh, Big Brother. But Big Brother, it was, now that I'm, I'm more analytic, I'm becoming more and more analytic. Because at, in your life, you don't have to be analytic, right? You just let things happen, and it's not one of my biggest issues. It's letting things happen. Um, and I gotta, I gotta admit, I was wrong for that. And it sucks being wrong for something as simple as this. But if you're not able to admit it, you can't move forward. And um, I think that why it was so bad, it was because I would see those people live emotion in the, the show. And I would... I would think or I would perceive those emotions as part of a uh, new reality. And it wasn't part, it wasn't a new reality per se. It was um, emulating an emotion. And when you emulate an emotion, then you don't understand it because emulating an emotion leads to, to horrible thing. Horrible thing. For example, if you emulate an emotion, you. When you emulate an emotion, right? Emulate, it means like copy or. Um, Try to copy at least, and um, you, you, you're gonna put an you're putting an active effort into emulating a positive emotion, love. You, you, I was talking about um, this is all making sense. This is crazy. It's like a, a do to discover light, right? And I was talking about how people were trying to find love in places that they shouldn't try to find love at, with people they tr shouldn't try to get love from. Right? And this is that exact thing they're emulating. They're, they're trying to feel something. They're looking for it. You can be looking for love. You can be looking for happiness. You can be looking for joy, uh, for laughter. Right? And you're willing to push yourself and try to emulate them. Now, when you're trying to emulate a uh, feeling that is negative, um, your body is going to be, your brain is going to be like, yo, you don't want to live that. You're going to be sad. So don't emulate being sad. And that's when sadness is going to take over. Because when you do feel sadness, you're so used to emulating good emotion that when it does happen you're like holy holy shit like uh it's, it's it's tough to admit because this is something i've been doing this is something i i have been doing and it's it's understanding that i've been doing this at a detriment versus what i thought was positive but emulating happy emotion i could suppress negative emotion right that's a, that's a plan that's the logic behind it but what if all I did was live a lie and the truth was much darker and when that darkness came, I was not overwhelmed. What if my depression, my depression that happened three months ago, what if it was all built up by my own incapacity of living bad emotion? It's my own incapacity to live a balanced lifestyle because not everything's going to be happy. Not everything's going to be sad. You have to find a balance. Right? And that's what we are talking about yesterday with the, um, oh my god, this is, this is so fucking nice. And this is what I was talking about yesterday with the, um, with the, the need versus the, uh, priority. So, um, the need for work, uh, the, yeah, the need for work and the priority for YouTube, right? This is what we're living. We're living a balanced lifestyle, right? And, um, emulating, and the biggest problem also with emulating is, as somebody who was living emotion to somebody else, I, my understanding or my uh, interpretation of that emotion was by my own ID. So, for example, um, if to you, feeling, uh, okay, we all been crazy in love. We all been crazy in love. We all been at first love. Uh, we all believe in love at first sight. We all been uh, willing to die for somebody. But when you're trying to emulate that and it's not honest, then your emulation could be just a normal love and not a crazy love, right? And I think it's important to understand the difference because your perception might be wrong. And if your perception is wrong, then when you try to emulate the said emotion, you're wrong. And by perp perpetuating or um, going down this cycle 
of you having the strong emotion and understanding the source of the strong emotion, then when you do live in real emotion, you're like, no, I don't recognize that as love because this is my perception of love. I don't know what I'm feeling, but it's not love. And it's, it's kind of crazy because, yes, you, the emotion, oh, of course, now you can... Oh, dude, now you can argue. This is a fucking talk. This is a fucking subject. Are emotion part of your brain or they're part of your soul? They're part of your heart. They're part of your gut soul. They're part of what makes you human, right? And you would agree that this is... So the emotion is human. Because if you don't feel emotion, then you're a sociopath or a psychopath, right? Um, so the very crucial point here, the very crucial... Um, just limitation or uh, exception here is that... Um, those the emotion they need to happen, right? And uh, if your your brain is doesn't recognize an emotion, you don't get, you don't get to feel an emotion. So I want to give you a very simple ex uh, example. Um, and again, this is not written. This is not something I've read. This is all going out the dome. So a, a lot of this is going to be wrong. A lot of this is going to be um, it's not going to be. You're not going to agree with, you know? And that's life. And I don't mind people disagreeing with me. It's my perception. I'm going to make the same video in a year. And I have a completely different perception. And it's okay. It's evolution. Right? And what I was trying to say, I'm going to make a, a very simple example. Let's say I have a knife here. Right? And I decide to slash my hand open. I'm going to feel pain. Right? This is my... Um, this is my sensor, my uh, pain sensor, if you want, that are telling me, uh, hey, this hurts. So per also, for example, if you burn yourself and you feel pain, well, your body's going to send signal of pain to, these, to this area, saying, hey, you need to take care of it. You need to put water on it. Uh, you need to, to, to be careful with that spot because you're hurting, right? You're, you're wounded. And that's your, your, this is anything, even if for animals. Right, animals gonna see fire. They're gonna start smelling it, and they're gonna burn their nose. And this is to tell you. This is to teach you. This is the survival instinct at its finest. Is you don't know that this hurts, so you have to understand that this hurts. By understanding that this hurts, then hopefully you're not gonna make the same mistakes again. By not making the same mistake again, you're not gonna get hurt again. That's preservation of the body. That's preservation of the uh, mind. Right, so you learn lesson. You learn, learn not to trust. And arguably, um, when you learn not to trust, it's bad because you're survival and saying I'm trying to protect you. But by trying to protect you, you you're stopping yourself from living. Right? By stopping yourself from living, then you're, you're not re really happy because you don't experience full life. You have to experience full life. Otherwise, what's the point? And um, to me, this is such a, a, a intricate uh, talk because I was talking about how you are emulating and the fact that your body is going to tell you pain. Well, your body's going to do that no matter what. Um, there's some a really rare sickness where you don't feel pain. But physical pain cannot be emulated. Emotional pain can be emulated. Some people are going to be Again, redoing this cycle of constant pain. I got this uh, this girl on Instagram, and she's always fucking sad, and by always being fucking sad, and she doesn't give her chance the chance to be happy, right? And she has been like that for for years and years and years. And you want to shake her, and actually say, "Yo, give you the self chance to be happy," but then she's so used to that misery, she's so used to this sadness that she almost feel comfortable in it and if you were to make it her happy like I, like I was saying um in the previous video your, your mind is gonna be like yo you're not used to that this is weird and when we're feeling something is weird we're actually avoiding it so um again I'm gonna give you another example that is super personal to me um not before before this job before this job um let's say that true story too this is bad um <laughs> So, I'm not the biggest worker. It's admitted I'm not the biggest worker. I work a lot here, but otherwise I'm not working. And um, I had nine months of uh, unemployment. And I took the nine months, saved money up, built my money up, and I put those four months, the ninth month, into 13 months. Um, and after 13 months, I started working. But for those 13 months, I would stay home. I would have minimal contact. I, I would talk to only my mom and my father. Sometimes my friend is very rare. And by talking to said friend, or by talking to my father and my mother, I was in this um, place of comfort. Those are people I know. Those are people that are stranger. So when I'm going in a situation where I have to meet stranger, for, and for the last 30 months I haven't met stranger, it feels very strange because I lost the habit. It's, it's, it's a, if you leave a light on for 30 months, that light was fucking loneliness, was fucking... Um, 
staying in your lane, staying in that zone of comfort, right? And uh, you did it for two months, and eventually the light's gonna burn out. And the ability to meet stranger is gonna be weird. So I would I would stress about meeting people. I would stress about about doing cruelty. I would stress about that. I would. Um, I'm not the best talker in English. I can talk pretty why fi- uh, pretty fine. But in French, I talk really fast. And um, this emotion of stressing and not being able to talk, I would freeze. I would freeze. And knowing that this is gonna happen, it's bringing up a cycle of. Um, again, wanting to be alone because you're saying, well, look at how I'm doing socially. I'm not comfortable. I'm not talking the way I should. I'm freezing up. This is uncomfortable for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be staying back to being alone. Um, Tom Hardy, which is an amazing actor, but somebody that understands depression very, very well. Tom Hardy said the, l- being alone is very, very dangerous because once you're alone for uh, long enough, you get used to the silence and you understand how comfortable being alone is and I 100% believe that because as some already said um I can't do, it's so amazing to be alone um right now right now it's uh it's 1 30 a.m yes I have a social life at work yes I have a social life because I interact with you guys uh, but my social life in real life a party meeting people meeting girls it's next to none so when I know that technically if the story was to repeat itself, when I get to meet a girl, I would be uncomfortable, I would be shy. And knowing that I'm going to be shy, or I might be shy, and this is the simple thing, this very simple thing is just enough for me to be like, oh, hesitant. And that hesitation looks like uncertainty, and that uncertainty is extremely unattractive. Right? So, um, understanding that um, that loneliness brought me somewhere. And we were talking about, the whole video was talking about uh, emulating emotion. And I feel, I feel like mm, we're social beings. We're social beings. So, uh, I, thought, I, I think that the brain gets, it looks for a balance and it's trying to make you feel emotion that way. When you do feel an emotion, then you, you're you're fooling yourself into the thinking you're living. Um, you're gonna watch a movie. You're gonna watch a, a soap opera or like a fucking romantic movie. You're gonna start fucking crying for no reason, and those tears are not coming out of nowhere. It's because you have pent up sadness, and since you're stopping yourself from feeling it, when you feel a little bit, it explodes, right? Yeah. And I think that's why humans are such a amazing being. We're capable of complex emotion. We're, compl- we're capable of complex and suplex. You know, that's... Those multiple layers of emotion. Those multiple layers of feeling something. And it being weird because you're like, holy shit. What am I feeling right now? Holy shit. How long has it been since I've seen this feeling? We're going through all the life. We're going through weeks and weeks of just living and just surviving. And those emotions are put aside. When is the time you feel pain? When is the time you feel sadness? And of course, it's a good thing. But when you've been too long without feeling sadness, then you lose that you lose that habit. And when it hits you, it hits you. And it's crazy because it's almost, almost as if I was talking and saying, yo, go ahead. Go ahead, feel this emotion. Go ahead, feel sadness. Provoke sadness in you. And you don't want to provoke sadness because sadness is, quote unquote, a negative emotion. But then you can pretty much do it with a scary movie. You, we, um, people, we watch a lot of scary movie because we like the adrenaline, we like the sudden rush of real. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we're, we're we're looking for a adrenaline of being scared, and it's a nice feeling of being jump scared. You get a rush of adrenaline and. It's almost addictive, right? That's why we're watching a horror movie. We're watching romantic movie because we're probably in a shitty relationship. And watching those tells us what is the dream, right? Uh, Disney was long time for a long time really criticized for having um, women that were princesses, and the man is the one to save you. And the princess needed a man in their life. Well, uh, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. Um, maybe. Disney was aiming for a more female audience <laughs> and understood that a female audience might be more receptive to a romantic movie when you're looking at uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, right? You're looking at a, um, whatchamacallit, 
we're looking at a uh, <laughs> you're looking at a girl who falls asleep and the only way to save her is a dude who kiss her. If you look at a Little Mermaid, talk about Ariel, and the only reason she wants to go over the ocean is because she met a guy, right? And admittedly, it's again, it's a girl that wants to do a sacrifice or they use a dude to survive, right? And I think this is wrong. But then when you look at it from the optic of having a romantic story and this is more aimed towards a female audience, it makes sense. Um, if you're selling a story of Hercules, and uh, you know it's not, if you're telling the story of Tarzan, uh, you know it's gonna be more. The boys are gonna be more related to a a dude that goes in the jungle that's been raised by a monkey. It's gonna be more um, susceptible to be um, relating to a guy who's extremely strong and need to train, and is a fucking hero. If you look at um, Toy Story, right? If you look at uh, the greatest thing, the greatest example I can give you for a Disney movie that does that is Toy Story. Same thing, Toy Story is Pixar. I don't even know if it's Disney, but. If you look at it, this this movie is more intended for male viewership because again, it's a boy and his toy, and a girl can have her toy too. I'm not saying she can't. What I'm saying is this is what's represented in the movie. So of course we're gonna be relating more to the movie in itself, and um, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's super smart because at the end of the day, it's not necessarily about what the real movie represents. It's about what it makes us feel. And there you go. That's the important part. As always, I love you guys. Peace.